Welcome to another science adventure with Tom K. Today, along with my colleague, Dr. Michael Pittman from the University of Hong Kong, we have a new paper out in the journal Methods in Ecology and Evolution. Now, while we normally talk about fossils, this time we're going to be covering the fossil topic, but we're going to be talking about new technology. And the new technology that we're introducing today is this drone that we affectionately call Laser Raptor. Now, while you've seen many drones before, I can assure you that this one is different. This is the only drone in the world that's capable of finding fossils. Not only does it find fossils, it does so autonomously at night. How do we do this? We combined our previous laser fluorescence detection methodology that we've used in museums before, and now we've flown it on a drone to go out in the field and find fluorescing fossils on the ground. Very exciting technology, and we're here to show you all about it today. This device right here is the brains of the whole operation. This is the PixHawk 4 controller that takes care of all the functions of flying the drone. These are very advanced now and include all of the instruments that you'd find in a small plane like a Cessna. It has GPS, it has barometer, it has compass, and it has altimeter in it, and it also can store GPS waypoints and fly to those waypoints at a particular altitude. So this is important because we program the route that we want the drone to fly, and it does so automatically. And in fact, we can do what's called mowing the lawn, where it can strike back and forth and cover the entire area. So the PixHawk 4 is the brains of the operation that makes the whole thing work. Tucked in underneath the drone, these two black tubes hold what's called LIDAR. This is laser distance and ranging. So a laser pulse comes out of the one tube, bounces off the ground, is received in the second tube. When it does that, the time of flight between down and up tells you precisely how high the drone is above the ground to within a few centimeters. Now this is important because we want the drone to maintain a particular height over the ground as we scan. So this does what we call terrain following and will go up and down over the hills as it encounters differences in the height of the terrain. Another feature right next to the LiDAR is this strobe light. And you can see about once a second, it fires a strobe. And what this does is it takes a white light picture of the ground beneath the drone. So we know exactly where we are, even though it's at night. This right here is called a gimbal. The gimbal hangs down below the drone, has two motors, one for each axis, and a specialized sensor back here that can tell what the orientation is of the instrument package to the ground. What this does is, no matter what is happening to the drone, if it's being buffeted by wind or making a turn, the instruments always look straight at the ground no matter what. Very sophisticated device, does an excellent job. So all the technology of the drone, the autopilot control system, the gimbal, all of this is here to fly these two instruments. First of all, this is a Sony low-light camera. Now, it's an action sports camera, but this one is particularly sensitive to low light, which is what we need when we're trying to see the fluorescence. In front of the camera, there's this filter here, and the filter blocks the laser, which is very bright, so it can just see the fluorescence that the laser produces. Right next to it, here is the laser, and this is a blue laser, and it has a specialized lens in front of it, that will spread the line of the laser, the single dot of the laser, out into a line. So that line will stretch out about the width of the view of the camera, and then the drone flies forward, scanning the line over the ground. Once given the launch command, the drone flies autonomously into the Badlands at night. Once on station, the video records the laser line being projected on the ground beneath the drone. Here we see a freeze frame with the strobe showing where on the ground the drone is actually located. Once the mission is finished, the drone returns to the home location and lands. At this point, we remove the video and post-process it after the fact. To get a final image using just the lines 
from the laser, we cut out each laser line from the video frames and stack them up into a strip, which then shows us where the fossils are fluorescing on the ground. And bingo, we find a fossil. Fossils typically have a different fluorescent color than everything else, and that's how we can identify them in the strip. We then use the GPS in the video, as well as the white light photos, to identify the specific location. And that's how we use a drone like this to find fossils in the field. Working on this project has been quite interesting because it was a transition from science fiction to science fact. Having a hunter drone for real harkens back to all the sci-fi movies you've ever seen. And this one can be used for more than just finding fossils. Lots of particular minerals glow, differences in the ground we've seen, differences in the way the geology glows can tell us a lot if we scan an entire area. So we look forward to future endeavors using our cool hunter drone.